Hello and welcome to Willow's very own version of Potted History. Today we're at the Silver Lake Stadium, the home of Eastleigh FC, where today's visitors are Dartford. But before we preview the match, let's have a little look around the ground. Eastleigh FC in its present form came into being as recently as 1980, but the club's history stems back a little bit further than that. The club was originally formed in May 1946, when current club honorary general secretary Derek Brooks set up the club, naming it Swaveling Athletic Football Club. I think gaining Hampshire, Hampshire League status was our main uh, success. Uh, we uh, won the Southern Senior League West, I think it was called then, for our trophy. We applied for the Hampshire FA for the Hampshire League, which we not accepted. We went into Hampshire League Division 3 West, which we won, including the Hampshire Intermediate Cup. And um, we then uh, flirted between Hampshire League Division 2 and 1. East League at member Spitfires. The reason for this is because the Supermarine Type F37 34 Spitfire first flew on the 5th of March 1936 from the nearby East League Airport, which is now known as the Southampton Airport. The Silver Lake Stadium was previously known as 10 Acres, and after that was Sparshart Stadium. And with a capacity here of 5,000, the highest league attendance currently stands against AFC Wimbledon back in 2009, when the attendance was recorded at 2,200. But the highest attendance overall came in a friendly match against Southampton, when the attendance reached over 3,000. The grandstand here was erected in 1971, with the full floodlight system coming into place four years later. The proof and quality of the ground here is shown when the club is often used to host representative matches and cup finals. The Wessex League was formed in 1986 and East FC were one of the co-founders of the league back then. However, it did manage to gain promotion in 2003 to the then Dr Martins Football League South Eastern Division. East FC have been in the Conference South since 2006 and have recently turned professional under the watchful eye of Ian Baird. Baird's playing career includes Southampton, and Leeds United, while his managerial career sees him at Hong Kong, where he managed at international level. Um, Ian, dart for the visitors today. Um, you're in a good run of form. How do you fancy your chances? Well, if we do it right, we'll always have a good chance. I mean, Dartford are one of the high flyers. You know, by no stretch of the imagination are they world beaters, but you know, we, we got beaten by them 3-0 uh, early on in the season. I thought it was, you know, it's fairly unjustified in the day. But um, it's going to be a difficult game today. Um, their form has been a little bit up and down of late, but I'm sure if we do things right, then we'll be having a good chance. And as I said to you last week, after the, before the Farmer game, where do we want to be? We delivered, produced a good performance, we had three points. Now, where do we want to be now? On this cold winter afternoon, over 600 fans packed into the Silver Lake to see if Eastleigh could continue their good form with high flying dart for the visitors. It was Dartford who started better, with Danny Harris putting this cross into a dangerous area. Eastleigh did have some chances though, most notably Andrew White who fired wide from a one-on-one. -on -one. The momentum swung in Dartford's favour though, with Jamie Slabber judged to have used his arm to block Lee Noble's shots, resulting in a penalty despite protests from the home side. Our replay is inconclusive. Dartford defender Adam Green stepping up to send the keeper the wrong way. Goal the problems continued for Eastleigh when Ian Herring saw red for a second yellow card after carbon copy fouls on Dartford's Danny Harris. Dartford took advantage of the extra man and doubled their lead 10 minutes before half time, with John Wallace drilling home for a crowd of players much to the joy of the travelling fans, leaving Eastleigh manager Ian Baird with a near impossible task. A minute before half-time, Danny Smith gave the home side a glimmer of hope when he fired home from a Graham Montgomery throwing, exposing Dartford's defensive weaknesses. There were some nasty scenes at the half-time whistle, with the backroom staff and players of both teams getting involved in a war of words, with some having to be restrained. After the break though, it was Easley who let their football do the talking, when captain Tom Jordan climbed highest, leaving the Dartford keeper no chance to level the score for the 10 men. With the game in the balance, Dartford showed a lot of threat in the air, first Lee Burns heading over here, and then Tom Champion getting a weak connection here to waste a great chance. Graham Montgomery did pose a threat for Easley up the other end though, going close from this effort, 
and then having this shot tipped around the post. But it was Dartford who could have won it at the death, this time substitute Ryan Hayes heading over. This dramatic encounter ended with a share of the spoils, but the Dartford players were clearly unhappy with the ref at the full-time whistle. So Ian, two points dropped today or a point gained? Well, I think if anybody who saw the game, um, I would say after 15 minutes, I'm thinking, the two, you know, the two one-on-ones that Andrew White had, I thought, oh, is it going to be one of these days? And, you know, it transpired to be that because, you know, the referee, by his own admission, has, has got it wrong with the sending off of the inherent. I mean, their number 11 has bought two fouls. Hold my head up, no, no problem with the... Uh, hold my hands up, sorry. No problem with the two fouls, but two bookings was... Uh, was poor and he conned the referee and you know I'd like to see the penalty again but you know in any other area of the pitch is that is that a handball I don't think so um, and I think he's got what you know as, as he admitted to me at half time he definitely got one decision wrong but you know credit where credit's due to for us to go 2-0 down down to 10 men with three quarters of the game left um, you know the, the praise has got to go to the players I thought they were absolutely magnificent and they should be proud of themselves